Hello and welcome to the Thursday, August 31st, 2017 edition of the Sands Night Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Japanese security company NRI has released information regarding a critical vulnerability in Conman. Now, uh, Conman is short for Connection Manager, and it is a network manager that you often find in small devices, typically Internet of Things devices. The vulnerable component is a DNX proxy and Conman 1.34 and earlier are vulnerable to a buffer overflow that can lead to remote code execution or of course to denial of service. The one saving factor here is that in order to exploit the vulnerability, an attacker has to send DNS responses directly to the device so responses aren't forwarded by recursive DNS servers. But if an attacker can do that, they can take full control of the device. And since it is actually a stack-based buffer overflow, it's not that hard to pull off. So in particular, in a more targeted attack, if an attacker already has control over part of the network, this may be sort of an interesting lateral movement into industrial control devices. Now, a patch for this has been made public via Conman's Git repository, but of course, you may need to wait for your respective manufacturer to come up with updated firmware. NRI has not released any proof of concept. However, if you look at the patch, it's pretty straightforward uh, to figure out where the problem actually lies. And TrickBot, the latest banking malware, keeps evolving. And as part of its bag of tricks, it now added the recording of credentials for Coinbase. Coinbase is a Bitcoin exchange that's quite popular. And we have seen this over the last few years, in particular recently with the increase in the price of Bitcoin, that malware is going more after Bitcoins directly. In addition to Coinbase, this latest version of TrickBot also goes after PayPal, which of course is a more traditional victim of this type of banking malware. The malware itself arrives as usual as a Word document with macros. It claims to come from a bank. The one sample that Forcepoint here shows claims to come from CIBC. And if you remember, it was about a year ago that a critical vulnerability was found in pacemakers made by St. Jude Medical. Now, at the time, St. Jude was just in the process of being sold to Abbott Medical. That sale has been finalized by now. And Abbott was now requested by the FDA to release a firmware update for these pacemakers in order to address this vulnerability. Now, applying a firmware update to a pacemaker is not a simple task. It requires that patients do visit a doctor. The update itself is non-evasive. It apparently only takes three minutes to complete. But like with any update, there is a chance that the device will malfunction after the update and that's why patients have to do this at a doctor's office. It's also noted that during the update itself, uh, the device will operate in what they call life-sustaining mode, which will just make it pace at 67 beats per minute, not the actual program pace that was configured in the device. The FDA states that patients should address this at their next scheduled visit with their doctor and they need to be informed about potential risks of this update. Now, in this particular case, a compromise of the device was not all that difficult, but still, of course, it's not terribly likely that someone will perform sort of a mass attack against these devices. And so far, there's always a very difficult kind of a risk decision that has to be made here, whether it's more risky to update the device or to continue living with a vulnerable device. Apparently, there are about 400,000 affected patients. 
And the researchers at Princeton University came up with an interesting attack against smart speakers like your Alexas and uh, Google devices and the like that are reacting to spoken commands. Now, in the past, there were a couple of attacks that basically used distorted commands that weren't really recognizable as a command, but would trigger various commands in the device. This newer attack now does actually rely on some of the nonlinear properties of microphones in order to shift the command into the inaudible space ultrasound that is then actually recognized by the microphones that are built into these devices as a command. So in this case, the user would hear nothing at all, but the device would recognize a particular command and that would then result in the command being executed. Now, it isn't really clear to me if uh, this command could be launched using a regular speaker, like for example, by playing some sound on a laptop nearby or via an online ad, whether or not these commands could be triggered. We have seen some systems that were using inaudible uh, tones in order to, for example, detect with microphones whether particular ads were being played, but uh, that really used a different principle. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.